Here are some of the things you have to consider when you're uh, purchasing blades. Uh, first of all, uh, obviously the size, that means the length of the band and uh, the width, and then sometimes uh, you need to also know the thickness, but uh, the thickness of the blade is kind of a standard thing. Uh, pitch means the number of teeth per inch. Set is the way the, the teeth are uh, uh, alternately set, and I'll show you pictures of that in a second type of teeth, that is you want regular teeth or you want a hook or a skip tooth and then finally the blade material such as a common carbon steel or a high speed steel or a bimetal or carb carbide and uh, th the price will be pretty much determined by what the blade is made of. And some of the materials are very expensive so you got to decide you want a cheaper blade that won't last so long or a blade that uh, will last basically forever. And in most cases in a shop, like a home shop, you just want a, a blade that is going to uh, be a general purpose blade because you probably don't want to change them uh, from job to job. Now in a big factory like Caterpillar we're gonna, where they're going to saw a million parts or 10,000 parts, they need the exact blade and the exact speed and uh, uh, time is everything in a factory. The following information is out of that little sterret handbook on uh, bandsaw blades that I showed you before. But when we're talking about pitch, we're talking about the number of threads per, uh, teeth per inch rather, and sometimes they say points per inch, but uh, really this is the term that you need to uh, be familiar with and the pitch uh, is determined by the thickness of the metal or is it tubing or, or what type of material that you're going to be cutting. A general all-purpose uh, for the vertical bandsaw is uh, in the neighborhood of 14 or 12 teeth per inch. A little bit coarser on that horizontal saw it could be uh, 8 or 10 teeth per inch. It's nice to have as many teeth as possible in contact with the work. So if you've got real thin work, uh, you need a fine blade. As the work gets uh, thicker or wider, you can use a coarser blade, but it's nice to always have at least three teeth in contact with the work so that you don't get that yuga duga duga as you go through the work, which wants to knock the teeth off. Here's another picture showing... Uh, size sizes of stock. So if you've got smaller stock, this is a round stock, uh, we're going to use a, a finer blade so you can see that we got quite a few teeth in contact with the work. And then when the work gets larger, we can use a coarser blade and still have the same number of teeth in contact with the work. This picture shows the most common way that teeth are set in a, a bandsaw blade. and uh, Hand hacksaw blades and power hacksaw blades are also uh, made like this, but a raker set tooth is uh, where we have uh, one going to the right and one going to the left, and then we have a straight tooth which helps clear the chips, and then uh, repeating left, right, and straight. Now, a wavy set uh, blade is real good on a power uh, uh, horizontal band saw, and you can see it almost looks like the wave uh, of an ocean back and forth, and that helps to clear the chips, and supposedly it's a little quieter. A more common one that you might see even in hand hacksaw blades is, just, is the alternate, and that's what you would see in woodworking saws as well, where we just have one going to the left and one going to the right so that the kerf is a little bit wider than the uh, back of the blade and uh, this gives you uh, uh, chip clearance and minimizes the friction as the blade goes through the work. So you have to decide which one you want. And the blade salesman will help you with that. Again, I prefer the wavy on the horizontal and the raker on the vertical saw. There are many different manufacturers of blades. The three that I'm the most familiar with and I like simply because uh, they're the ones that I've used. I'm sure there are plenty of other good brands as well, but I always like the Simmons. That's the kind I probably used for 35 years. I don't know. I might have that spelled wrong. Maybe there's two M's in there. 
Lately I've been using the Sterrett blades and I really like those. They seem to be a real quality and the last ones I ordered came directly from Athol, Massachusetts out of their plant, not from a distributor. Well, the distributor ordered them from Sterrett's and they were shipped uh, from Massachusetts. And then finally I like the Lennox blades. I've used quite a few of those with uh, good results. That's up to you, of course, and it depends on what your industrial supplier uh, has available. You probably aren't going to be able to get blades locally over the counter, uh, you know, in a smaller cities. Now, maybe in the big cities you can, but if you're from a rural area, you, you surely have to order them. So make sure you have several on hand, and in case you break one in the middle of a job. This is another page out of the Sterrett book, and if you want to uh, read the description of the way these teeth are set, uh, which are, is probably a little more accurate than what I'm telling you verbally, uh, uh, pause your video and uh, read these, because there's some good information there. Here's a picture of the more common ways that uh, uh, the teeth are cut uh, on a blade. Uh, a regular cut, which is probably what you're going to order, but then there's also a hook and a skip tooth and these are used for wood and uh, non-ferrous metal such as aluminum these bottom two you're probably going to order regular here's some uh, a little better description than what I can provide verbally out of the same book so pause your video if you want to read that here's the four main kinds of uh, blades and what they're made of uh, and from top to bottom uh, this would be the cheaper and we get to more expensive as we get to the bottom uh, carbon steel just a common uh, blade of hardened carbon steel and uh, uh, very affordable but uh, it's you know if you've used cheap hacksaw blades and you've used expensive hacksaw blades and you can really tell the difference high speed uh, blades are going to be a little more expensive but they'll last quite a bit longer they're made of high speed steel rather than carbon now the bimetal uh, blades have a, a carbon steel uh, backing and then the teeth are welded on there and the teeth are, uh, they can be made of high speed steel or some, some other alloy but you're going to find that these really last a long time and are excellent blades but they probably double the price of the carbon steel. Carbide blades uh, I never have used uh, but they are available and, but they would be quite expensive. Uh, I, I believe that uh, bimetal is your best uh, uh, purchase. So try those sometime, or at least try one of them, see what you think. Now remember that no matter what the blade is made of, a moron can manage to ruin it or break it almost instantly. A good uh, hand or a good machinist can make almost any one of these last a long time. Nothing is, a f nothing is foolproof because fools are so ingenious. I haven't mentioned anything about variable pitch bandsaw blades uh, and I couldn't find pictures of it so this little chart here is out of the Travers catalog but uh, we've talked about constant pitch so far that is uh, 14 teeth per inch or 10 teeth per inch but uh, one of the blades I had over there uh, on that vertical saw was a variable pitch and you can't say that it's a 14 or an 18. It, it, there'll be a range of uh, pitches there. In other words, a variable pitch will be anywhere between 14 and 18. And uh, the advantage of this, and this isn't in, in any of the older books because it's, this is a relatively new thing, I believe, maybe the last 10 or 20 years. So it wasn't in that Sterrett book. But the advantage of a variable speed or variable pitch is that it uh, minimizes noise and helps to clear the chips and uh, just an overall improved uh, blade. I couldn't find uh, much information on this, and I don't think I'm being very clear on this, but uh, consider a variable pitch for your uh, saws. Now, a couple notes on safety again. Remember, that the, in the meat industry, in the slaughtering industry, they use bandsaws to cut meat. So a bandsaw will certainly cut your meat. Remember what I did the other day. And uh, that's with a blade that wasn't even uh, uh, on a machine. So <laughs> be careful 
on bandsaws or any cutting tools. I hope I haven't talked you to death on this subject because this is five or six uh, videos and uh, but I think that I've given you all the information that I can and you can read up on this because sawing is a interesting subject. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.